incarcerated was because they said he was a communist. Because they used acupuncture and other alternative methods of healing that all of us should have access to, but that was used as visible evidence in court to prove that they're communists and therefore part of the New People's Army. And so the government accuses them not of being there to give out health care supplies and education to the people of how to take care of themselves, but they're accusing them of being there, rousing up rebels and starting a revolution. So the more and more money that we invest into counterterrorism, the more and more military will be walking through rice fields, knocking down all the face fields to get to the communities where these people are. The more and more money that our country puts into counterterrorism, the more and more people that they are displacing, the more and more people that they are arresting, that they are harassing, that they are torturing, that they are kidnapping, that are disappearing. The money that we are investing by this country's tax dollars into that country's counterterrorism, the more and more people are becoming hurt by the government, which forces them to organize, which forces them to fight back for their rights. So honestly, like every dollar that we make here, every day we go to work, some of that money goes into our taxes, some of that money goes into counterterrorism in the Philippines, goes into all kinds of military aid in the Philippines. So we directly are accountable to that woman who's sitting in jail during her pregnancy because our tax dollars put her in that jail cell. And so when we come back here and tell you the wrong 43 are sitting in jail, there's 43 of them, they're health care workers, they're just trying to help their people and give health care where there is none. It's the same as the organizers here, but over there, the conditions are just a little harsher because the military is a lot more um, prevalent and it's a lot more able to attack people and detain people and they're stopping those folks that are trying to be out there serving the people because that's a threat to them. So um, on, when we were there, we were in the, the prison with them, we, we got to share with them some songs and we got to share with them some things that we do. One of the things we shared with them was the story of Sister Chavez and the United Farm Workers. And one of the things we told them is that when Filipino organizers were here in California, they started a strike. And that strike spread around California and impacted all kinds of different farm workers, majority Latinos, some Native American, African folks, and that the Filipino worker strength spread um, like wildfire around the farm workers in California and impacted all of our lives, impacted the way that I was raised, impacted the way that, that we grew up here in California. And so we, we shared with them one of the things that we've been taught came from that movement. One of the things that we've been taught to do at the end of every one of our meetings is called the Unity Class. Yes. So when we were in, the, was in that prison in Manila on a Sunday and there's like all these women sitting around talking to us about their incarceration and how they've been trying to serve the people and how dedicated they are that even when they get out they're going to serve the people so dedicated that while they're inside jail they're providing health care to the other prisoners and fighting for more adequate conditions within the jail. We taught them how to do the Unity Class and it was really tight and it went like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs>